Let's look back, far back into the past, to the ancient year of 2013. Life was simpler then. Laptops and tablets were distinguishable from each other. Mountain Dew and Doritos were separate products, and the very notion of a Donald Trump presidential candidacy could result in rolling fits of laughter. That'll be the day. Almost more importantly, Payday 2 had just launched and had a bright future ahead of it. Again, a simpler time. No infamy levels, no perk decks, no akimbo, just you and your friends and the one or two heights that were the best for farming cards. You see, after actually buying equipment, card drops were pretty much the only way of getting gun mods. Farm cards long enough and hope one of them drops a fire breather or a hollow sight. This was fabulously broken. There were few, if any, guns that reached 40 damage per bullet, that magical breakpoint for overkill difficulty, which is considered medium damage today. Every 10 to 20 damage was hard fought for, or hard ground for. So, you had groups of people running the same heights over and over for card drops so they could participate in this remarkably stingy system, handing out either fabulously useful exotic receivers or useless bundles of $5,000 in cash, rewarding not skill, but luck. I call this system broken because it was the only way to get certain upgrades, like sights, or get certain guns over a breakpoint from just okay to completely awesome. The other reason was the way it made people play the game. Like I said, you could run into public lobby after public lobby full of people doing jewelry store over and over and over again until their brains exploded out of their heads and ran to their grandmother's houses. Because even if she only had a VHS copy of The Sound of Music and a jar full of hard candy in her apartment, it was still better than doing jewelry store one more time time. So, how better to fix a broken system than a paid DLC? Yeah, I would have been furious if the Gage Career Pack was a straight drop of mods for five bucks, because not only would they have been making the player pay to fix the game, but then the argument could be made. Obviously, they did this on purpose. It's a conspiracy to make a shell out for DLC! But Overkill worked their magic and actually turned what could have been a disaster into one of the best early generation DLCs in the lineup, and probably one of the more useful ones to this day. Okay, so get this. Yes, you are getting weapon mods in a paid pack, but it's how you unlock them that makes this cool. In every heist, and added retroactively to the new ones, there are two to ten little packages, all different shapes and sizes and colors, and by collecting them, you get closer to completing one of five package sets, which range from not amazing to super good. Trying to get these mods turns into this great little easter egg hunt. You're robbing banks, cooking meth, defying all efforts by law enforcement to stop your heinous acts, and looking for pretty brown packages tied up with string, a minigame which creates rewards for participating rather than just straight power-ups for cash. It was ingenious, straight up saved the DLC from being a cash grab and enriched the game overall, which is what any DLC should do. The upgrades themselves were also very useful. At every tier, you get scopes, which were one item which never seemed to drop from cards. I remember swapping this one sight from primary to primary when I wanted to use different guns because it was the only one I had. With the courier pack, I went from a sight drought to so many I could pick which one looks coolest overnight. Many of the packs also provided workhorse compensators, stocks, and grips to marginally improve weapon performance. The stat boots were more drastic at the time of release though, since most of the weapons we know and love weren't even in the game yet. Most assault rifles hit 40 damage with difficulty. There weren't any DMRs to speak of other than the M308, which was a poor weapon overall at the time. A lot of weapons were simply lower damage and stayed that way. So those extra 5 to 8 damage went a long way in some cases. The grand prize, in my opinion, were the AK car quad stack mags, which you could use to bring any Skiffen Soviet or NATO pack gun to a 60 round magazine. In some cases, like for the Golden AK, this didn't matter as much, because the Golden AK's main issue is with total ammo, not ammo capacity in the magazine. I only need two words to express the brilliance of the quad stack mags. Car 4. With quad stacks, you had instant access to essentially an LMG that had the power, accuracy, and stability of an assault rifle. For a long time, the Car 4 was the second best gun in the game, surpassed only by the locomotive, and that power weapon status was driven home by the Gage Courier Pack. The minigame of collecting packages and the gun upgrades themselves that the Courier Pack added worked so well that they feel practically like part of the base game now. 
It's rare in gaming to find an idea, particularly an add-on, that gels so well with the core game and does what it sets out to do so completely and to the fullest practical measure. Now, the question remains whether or not the Courier Pack is still useful today. The sheer volume of DLC that the game has now it has such a vast field of content, which pretty easily outpaces the usefulness of most of the mods in the pack. After the stats rebalance, hitting 40 damage isn't that difficult anymore, and while that means that your personal taste has more of a say in what guns you choose, it also means that fishing around for gauge courier packages is more of a compulsion for the OCD afflicted rather than something that rewards you in any considerable way. Was it good at the time? Absolutely. One of the best DLCs ever released. Is it worth getting now? Well, you got three bucks laying around you ain't got no more use for. The mods themselves might be rebalanced, maybe, perhaps, sometime in the future, and the scopes are still pretty cool, even though you don't need them anymore. I would say pick it up if you want to get into that neat little mini-game that it introduces, and if you want to get some more cosmetic stuff for all your guns, and hey, last sale I saw this thing for like 90 cents, so you know what? I'd say, yeah, it's still worth it for a discount. Busted. We're busted. <laughs> James, can you make us angst? <laughs> <laughs> hey James. <laughs> James. James is messed up. Part 3.14. Oh, you stole my joke. <laughs> That's a bad sign. I'm scared. No, stop. No, no James, we've stop. gone too far down the rabbit hole. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe into a bag or something, you're gonna hide.